I got another question. This was actually via email, and it was referencing freelancing over on Upwork. The the question says, thanks, John. You are really helpful. I'm new to ODES. My profile is good enough, but can't find a job. Can you help me with this? Here's a link to my profile. Whenever someone sends me a question like this, they say, hey, my profile is really good or my profile is good enough. Well, I'm not getting any work. I always kind of chuckle a little bit because if if your profile were good enough, you'd be getting work. <laughs> what a shocker. That, that's really what it comes down to. And so inevitably, whenever I click through and look at the profile, there are always things that stand out to me that are huge red flags for a client. I could sit here and play whack-a-mole with 100 different profiles and, and go through this and talk about all the different elements. But if you don't get the thinking behind it, the, the switch in thinking that you need to make, it really becomes irrelevant because you'll make the same mistakes over and over and over again. And you know it's all in your head. So I really want to hone in on the thinking, but I'm going to try to use this as an example. So the thinking that matters is what I find a lot of developers, their mindset is, you know, they'll, they'll tend to focus on the one, on the, the one or two really good things about their profile. They'll think that, well, 90% is good enough, right? That's exactly what's implied in this. My profile is good enough. Well, if you're not getting work, then it's not good enough. And you really have to be that hard nosed with yourself. Oh, it's like uh it's like it's like coding. If you write a line of code and you get a PHP error, you wouldn't sit there and yell at your computer and say, My code's good enough. You should just process it. It's close enough. you would understand that something's wrong with your code. Well, it's the same here. If you're not getting work, there's something wrong with the profile. And again, looking at this profile, there are several things that stick out to me. You know, I want to I want to try to use an analogy to to help drive this point home. So, I don't know if you have kids, but if you have kids, this will be easy for you. If you don't, and maybe you can think about a a little brother or sister or someone you really care about who is younger, a uh, cousin, whatever. And let's say you were going to hire a babysitter for them. And let's say you were looking at a profile for uh, a bunch of different pro profiles for babysitters. Now, this is someone you really care about. I think about my boys when, when we talk about this. You know, There's someone I really care about. Like if so anything happened to them, I would be just, I don't, I'd be beside myself. I wouldn't know what to do. And so you're looking at these profiles and you, you go through a particular profile and you look at it and you see seven good things, right? You see you know, maybe a good job history, maybe some good reviews, uh, maybe the picture of the person looks, looks good or whatever. They look like they're a normal person. You look at, and you see seven good things on this profile, but you see three things that are really big red flags for you, right? Maybe it's something they said in their description. Maybe they said they're, they, they're into spanking and, they spank. That would be weird for a babysitter to do, but let's just imagine. And you're really totally against that. You're totally against spanking. And, and so that's a big red flag for you. Would you say in that instance, as the person giving about to give someone the care of another person that you really care about, would you say, oh, well, yeah, there's that red flag, but it's good enough. There's seven good things. There may be three really scary things, but there's seven good things. And if I weigh them logically, seven is greater than three. So I'm going to hire this person. Oh, hell no. Of course you wouldn't. Those three red flag. it would only take one big red flag for you to probably move on, especially if you had hundreds of thousands 
of other babysitters to look through and choose from. And so I, I bring this up and use this analogy to, to help you understand that when a client is looking at your profile, what they are thinking about is risk. That's the number one thing in their mind is risk. They are about to risk their money, their time, and what for a lot of these clients, the project you're going to build for them is like their baby. It's something that's really important to them. And so if there is a single red flag on your profile, they're going to move on because there are hundreds of thousands of other developers on these sites and available just in the world for them to choose from. So why would they hire someone that has a a red flag when they can go find someone who has zero? And so that's what you have to understand when you're working with your profile. That it only takes one red flag. As I look at this profile, I see several red flags. The one that's hardest to explain, but is probably the most important of all of this. And that is the fact that what you're charging per hour, what you list as you charge per hour is $3 per hour. Now, for I, I get that oh, I, I have friends of mine who are from the Philippines and... I get that with the exchange rates and everything, in certain places, $3 an hour is a ton of money. So I I understand that for you, from your perspective, you may look at that and go, that's a ton of money. Or you may look at it and go, the lower my price, the better, the more likely I am to get hired. That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. I can tell you that's almost never true. It's almost never true. You, we think that way because of when we go to, you know, say Walmart or some store and we look at different products and we oftentimes look at the price and buy the cheaper one. But how many times have you gone to Walmart and bought in Coke instead of cola or Pepsi instead of cola or the Shasta? Oh, give me that so, so, so. The Coke costs more. Why are you getting the Coke and not the cola? Why are you going to the medicine aisle and getting the brand name instead of the generic? I know that there are people that buy generic and buy this, that, and the other, and they're really staunch about it. But those people are pretty rare. And often you'll find even them, there will be something where they, they choose brand name over generic and they really have no good reason why. They just they just do it, even though the brand name costs more. Why do people do that? Because people associate value with cost. Let's take something that you, you don't know maybe as much about. Let's take jewelry. Let's say you have two rings side by side. And you don't know, I assume, don't know much about jewelry. I know I don't. One's a $500 ring and one's a $100 ring. Which one do you think is going to be more valuable? Probably the $500 ring. Most people are going to assume that the $500 ring is a more valuable, better ring. There may not be a single difference between the two, but they're going to uh, assume that. We put stuff on Craigslist for free and nobody will come and get it. And then we'll put, okay, we'll put it on there and say 10 bucks and somebody will show up within an hour. Why do people do that? Because they look at the free fridge and say, well, something must be wrong. It's too good to be true. They, they look at the free thing and they say, you know, something must not be right. That's why they're just giving it away. But as soon as you put a price on it, then they automatically assume that because you're willing to charge for it, that everything must be okay. Well, not 100%, but they're at least willing to look at it. It's the same with your clients. If you put $3 an hour on your profile, I don't care where you're from, those people are going to look at your profile and automatically think something must be wrong. Just like when they see the free fridge, they say, well, something must be wrong. They're going to look at your $3 an hour and they're going to say, something must not be right. 
they know the market a little bit. They're looking at other developers and seeing, okay, there's developers charging $25, $50, $100, $200 an hour. This guy's charging three? What's wrong? Now, you can talk all you want about exchange rates and where you live. It doesn't matter. You've already lost because the initial impression is there that something is wrong. Now, the nice side of that is you could probably raise your hourly rate and have better success getting clients, have a better chance of getting clients. Oh, and by the way, you're going to make more money. How about that? So probably the biggest red flag on this entire profile is the fact that you're only charging $3 an hour. I get that that makes it's so hard to get your head around, but it's a red flag to people. They associate value with cost. So if you only cost $3 an hour, they assume you must only be worth $3 an hour. And I can tell you, I'm not going to give my baby to someone who's only worth $3 an hour. 